Hey guys, I'm Coach Corey. Thanks for joining me again for another episode of the Legion Lab. Today I'm joined by Coach Mike Gomez. What's going on, guys? All right, guys, so here we are. It's Mike's day to get in front of the camera and share a little bit of his story with you guys. I want to call this episode Cancer to Coach. Mike is a brand new coach that just came on board here. Uh, he's been involved at Crossfit Little Creek for quite a number of months, I think years now, two years, I don't even know. It's been a long time. Yeah, but, it's been a very long but time. But he actually just recently came on board the coaching staff. I had the pleasure of recertifying at the Crossfit Level 1 with him when he went for his initial one, and it was a lot of fun. So, Mike, tell us about uh, yourself and your experience so far, both here at Crossfit Little Creek and then at kind of Crossfit at large. Yeah, um, so I initially started CrossFit back in high school. I was probably about 15 or 16 years old. Um, at the time, I was playing water polo and I was swimming and I wanted to amp up my sport. So I found a CrossFit gym called CrossFit Stockton with coach Dee Dee Nelson and Bob Nelson. Uh, fantastic coaches. Um, they're like my second parents as Corey and Star are. Um, great gym. And I started there and I worked my way up and I found out that I loved CrossFit more than I loved water polo. So I quit water polo and I went to CrossFit full time. And eventually Coach Judy asked me to assist her with all the classes. So I did and I found a love for coaching. I found a love for managing a business and I just found a love for people. Nice, how old are you now, Mike? I am 21. Cool, so he's 21, super young, but a, a really great life story. Uh, Mike has been just a, a real centerpiece of a lot of the things that, that our gym has been all about. So you heard him say that he likes coaching, he likes to, to live kind of a life of service, if you will, uh, in the Navy, right? Won't yes. you share a little bit of your Navy experience with us? What's that been like for you? My Navy experience has been great so far. Um, I joined right out of high school. Um, I am a gunner's mate, so what I do is pretty much I handle weapons, I fix weapons, and I shoot weapons. Um, I am attached to Navy Expeditionary Combat Command. I was attached to Coastal River Marine Squadron 2, and now I'm just waiting for my time, for my contract to be up. I'm getting medically retired soon. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that, man. That's been a big part of your journey here, and, and it's been something that we have been very fortunate to kind of see you pull through. Yeah, so um, the reason I'm being medically retired is because I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia back in May of 2018. Um, I initially presented with sinusitis, a very severe case, and we ran a course of antibiotics as per usual protocol, and unfortunately it didn't get better. Um, there's actually a video on my Instagram. It was a day we were doing 20 rep max back squats. And I went for 280, I got to like rep 15 or 14, and I bailed out. And a few days later, I had like a huge hematoma, which is a bruise on my back. And I thought, oh, well, it's, it's probably just from the, uh, the barbell. And then a month goes by and turns out it, it, was, it was leukemia. Yeah. And leukemia is a very hard cancer to diagnose because usually people present with flu-like symptoms. Sure. And doctors don't really think Oh, I mean, it's just a flu. We don't need to do blood work yeah. until it gets really serious. Well, it's pretty rare too, right? For, for your yeah. age group to get that type of, uh, of blood cancer. What, um, so what was, your, what was your treatment like and what was the process like with you kind of coming back from that? I know that there was um, some pretty scary times for you. And then also, uh, you know, you got to see your, your mom. Uh, quite yeah. a bit, so there was some, some silver lining to that as well. But share, share your story with that. So um, upon being admitted into the hospital, I started out with what is called induction chemotherapy, and that's pretty much just um, seven plus three, which is seven continuous days of um, Ida Rubicin and Donna Rubicin, and then three days of, I want to say it's fludarabine. So seven continuous days of chemotherapy, and then three days of this um, shot that they gave into me. Yeah, that's, that's scary, man. It must have been tough for you. What? Um it, it's funny now because we talk about it and we get to like reflect on how, how awesome it is that you came through. But, um, you know, even back then we tried to joke quite a bit. You learned a lot of medical terms and stuff. Yeah. So even some of yeah. the stuff you're saying now, I'm like, I don't know what that means. I learned a cool. lot of just stuff that a 20 year old shouldn't really know about sure. per se, but 
I'm glad that I educated myself because a lot of times that, that, I mean, that's what my doctor told me is to educate yourself on all this so that you cannot let the disease win. Yeah. You have to constantly put yourself out there and keep learning because I mean, if people don't keep learning, then we'll never find a cure. That's right, man. So, so I would say that you did a pretty good job of that. Then you've been, you've been cancer free. I'm not sure exactly what they call it, right? There's, there's cured and cancer free and some different things, right? But, but explain to us kind of what the process looked like when you started seeing really good results and then kind of like how, what the timeline was post uh, transplant for you. So uh, we started induction chemotherapy. It was the day, it was after Memorial Day. And um, this is in 2018? 2018. And um, went through that. Unfortunately, that chemotherapy did not put me into remission. Um, I got really sick. I got teflitis, which is an, a very severe infection of the stomach. Yep. And um, pretty much after that, my one of the doctors pretty much told me to make this my legacy because it was most likely that I was going to die. And my other doctor, he just refused to let me believe that. So he just kept pushing me and kept pushing me. And he told me every single day I have to get out of bed and just walk. Yep, just Cause, stay active. Yeah. Because um, he used to always say, if you're in bed, you're dead. And I, and I, and I took that quite literally. I, I was out of the bed every single day yeah. doing what I can to make sure that I was still keeping the blood flowing. I'm glad to hear that, though, man, because I feel like that's something that's prevalent in a larger society today. And I feel like, I'm, you know, 70% of chronic diseases can be fixed through, through diet yeah. and exercise. So um, not to say that cancer can be cured through diet and exercise, but it can certainly get us on a better path. Speaking of that, how do you feel like that your fitness and, and kind of doing CrossFit beforehand, how do you feel like that set you up to kind of cope with the diseases that, that you had issues with? I definitely would say if I did not do CrossFit prior, I would have died for sure. I would have definitely died. Um, I think after my first bone marrow biopsy, which is just, they take a core needle and they just aspirate into your, into your iliac bone and they get like a sample of your bone marrow and they test it for pathological disease. And um, I presented with like 90% cancer in my bone marrow and then in my peripheral blood, I think I was like around 88%. Wow. My white blood cell count was 128,000. Uh, normal range is like five to 8,000. Sure. So I was, I was pretty high up there. Yeah, it's crazy, man. <laughs> um, we are very stoked about it and very, very fortunate and blessed. And, and I think you and I could probably talk about it for forever. But what I'd like to kind of bridge into a, a little bit less uh, of kind of your, your journey then and more of your journey now. So tell us a little bit about what it's like for you to get in the gym and what the transition's been like from you being a very competent, capable athlete to now growing your skills as a coach. What's that been like? So after my stem cell transplant, which I had at... Duke. Um, fortunately, my transplant doctor is a very serious CrossFitter. He went to the MD level one course and um, he pretty much, he, he granted me permission to come back into the gym, which a lot of patients who are like, usually, I, I think I came back to the gym around 100 and, 130 days post transplant and usually that's not really the case because you're, you're still at risk for infection, you're still at risk for a lot of things. And my doctor granted me permission, so I was like, I'm going to take full advantage of this. I'm going to do what I can in the gym. And fortunately, um, I wasn't really working a lot of hours at that time, so I could come into the gym when there was a less frequent amount of people. That's awesome, man. I, I think that that's, that's been great. It's really been motivating for, for me personally, but also I know a lot of people have talked about how motivating your journey has been, so I think that you conquering that and, and coming through that turmoil really set you on a good basis to have, um, you know, an awesome platform to be able to share your story and talk to people. And I think that resonates a lot. And I've seen it, you know, even when you're not able to participate in the class, but you're, you're in here and you're crushing your own stuff. Um, that's not lost on people, you know, and I think that weighs heavily on, on everybody and their understanding of like that their, their daily problems and what's holding them back um, in a different context is really not that bad 
So that's great, man. I look forward to a lot more days of working out with you and coaching with you. And I really think that you're an asset to the gym here. Uh, what would you say to people who haven't started CrossFit yet or, or are kind of scared of it? I would say just, I mean, all, all it really takes is just to get your foot in the door. I mean, quite, quite literally, just get your foot through the door and check it out and see, and see, if, and see where you fit in. Because, I mean, the CrossFit community accepts everybody. No matter what your fitness level, I mean, look at me, I, I was 130 pounds when I came back. I had no cardio, I had no strength, but now I'm back weightlifting, I'm back doing cardio workouts. Yeah, you're making progress scary fast right now. You're doing, coming along really well. I mean, in fact, one of my first workouts back was Murph. Murph. Yeah. And it's not, it's not the, it, it probably wasn't the greatest <laughs> idea, but it was, no, it was, it was definitely not. a nice way to get back maybe. in. But awesome, man. Well, the kids are making noise behind us here, so it's about time to wrap it up. But I appreciate you sitting down with me and sharing your story once again. And, and, and I think people are, are really going to um, find this one interesting and it's going to resonate with a lot of folks. So thanks, Mike. We Thank you for having it. me. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Go ahead, leave us a like or share this video, whatever platform you're viewing it on, uh, and help some more people discover all the great stuff that's happening within the walls here across at Little Creek. Have a good one.